In the last clip, we used R as a giant calculator, which it actually is. But what makes R more powerful is that we can use predefined functions to perform complex operations. Let's have a look at how they work in principle. Functions in R consist of their function name plus parentheses. For example, there's a function sum that can do the summation just like in the last clip. You should actually never use spaces between the name of the function and the parentheses. If you type the opening parentheses in RStudio, the closing one will automatically be entered for you. What goes inside the parentheses are called the arguments to that function. So that's the information that the function expects. For sum, the argument is simply a sequence of numbers to be summed, separated by commas. So sum 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 calculates the sum of these five numbers to give us 15. Sum can also take objects as arguments, so we can sum a, comma, b to give us 7. And we could even sum elements multiple times, so sum a, comma, a, b, or even perform a calculation within the parentheses first before R sums the result. So sum three times A comma B. This command tells R to calculate three times A, which is six, and then add B, which is five, to give us 11 in total. Another simple function is to calculate the square root of a number with the function SQRT. This takes one argument, so either a number or an object containing a number. So SQRT parentheses A gives us the square root of 2 and A plus A gives us the square root of 4 because it first performs 2 plus 2 and then takes a square root. We can of course again assign the result of this command to an object we may want to name my results. The objects a, b, d, my sum and my results are data types that R calls a vectors and a vector is the most basic data structure in R. Our vectors so far contain only one element, but vectors can contain more than that. Suppose we want to create a vector with a sequence of numbers from 1 to 5, we can use the function c. There is some disagreement over what c stands for and some say it's combine or concatenate. In any case, combining elements into a single vector is what C does. And C takes as arguments the sequence we want to be stored in a vector. C, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And Enter will send the output to the console, a sequence of 1 to 5. If we want to store this sequence, we can call up the command again and assign it to my numbers. Now we see that this object is also stored in our environment and we see that it is a vector with positions 1 to 5 containing the numeric values of 1 to 5. If you want to create a vectors of numbers from 1 to 100, you obviously don't want to type in 100 numbers. So you can use the range operator by typing C1 colon 100 and assign that to a large vector. Or if you want the sequence in descending order, type C100 colon 1, assigning that to large vector 2. If you want to check how many elements a vector contains, you can do so by checking the length of a vector using the function length a large vector. Note that at this point RStudio will always try to guess what you want to write, and in this case which element you're trying to call. So you can hit tab for auto completion once you have selected the right one with the arrow keys. This saves you a bit of time in typing long object names. If you print large vector to the console by typing it, we also see what the numbers in square brackets at the beginning of output lines mean. They provide information on the position of a particular value within the vector. Such positional numbers will depend on the size of your console window so you may have different numbers here, but such a number will always give you the position of the first element in that line. You can also access the value in a particular position of a vector. Suppose you want to know what the value in the 95th position of a large vector 2 is, then type the name of the vector and add 95 in square brackets, no spaces, or 94 for the 94th element, or 93, etc. You can perform calculations on these more complex vectors. Suppose we have vector x, which we assign the numbers 1 to 5, and we then multiply x by 2. R will multiply each value in x by 2 and return a vector of the same length as x. And if you have another vector y with the numbers from 6 to 10, 
we can sum x plus y, where the first elements of both vectors are summed, and then the second elements of both vectors, and so on. Note that if your vectors are of different length, I will recycle the values in the shorter vector until all elements in the longer vector could be matched. But that's something you can try out yourself for practice. To finish this clip, you can also create vectors consisting of characters. The major difference here is that you need to put quotes around the character strings. So to create a vector my cars, we assign C the names L, Bird, and Chuck. Note that if you omit the quotes, I will interpret L, Bird, or Chuck as names of objects you want to combine. So my cars to assign L, Bird, Chuck. And then R tells you that it couldn't locate the objects. Vectors can only contain one type of data, so they're either characters or numbers. If you mix the two, I will use the smallest common denominator. And R can convert numbers to strings, but it can't convert strings to numbers. So a mix will result in a character vector. My mix, character string one, number two, and see my mix has turned that into a character vector.